Hi everybody, welcome to our webinar. Today we are going to be going over the new EST and concentrating on the tools for the people preparing the information for the environmental screening tool getting ready for the screening event. Just a few housekeeping things, normal GoToWebinar stuff. You are muted right now. Please type any questions you have in the box and we are recording this and the recording will be available on our website in a few days after the training. Today we got four of us here. Um, Pete McGilvery is our administrator who's uh, responsible for the ETDM process and the environmental screening tool. He's here today to help us answer any of the, your tough questions that you come up with. And I'm Ruth Roaza. I'm the environmental process analyst and I'm the task leader for the environmental screening tool out of the Office of Environmental Management. And with me, I've got people that if you've been using the EST, you know well, they're the experts, um, Stephanie Clemens and Mike Konikoff, who have been working our help desk and are the brains behind the EST for us. So they're here. Um, our, our goal today is I've got a few slides inter introducing just where we are, um, what we're going through today, and then we'll actually do a live demo. Stephanie's going to be driving the EST. I'll be talking through. Mike's monitoring for any questions. Uh, we, you know, we have a fairly small group today, so if you have any questions, feel free to just go ahead and um, type something in there and we'll get them answered and um, go forward with there. We are planning about a five-minute break about midway through and then finish up. And today's webinar, we're concentrating on the tasks leading to a screening event. And then tomorrow, we'll talk about some of the ETDM coordinator tools um, that are available for supporting the ETAT during their screening events and then after the screening events itself. So just to kind of put this in perspective, the environmental screening tool supports the ETDM process. And here you see our general outline diagram that I'm sure you're familiar with. And today we're concentrating on those two screening events, planning and screening, and the basic steps that lead up to those. There's slight differences, of course, between each of them and, and decision-making, there's a lot of differences, but in terms of the steps and preparing, they're, four basic steps of the screening event. The first one is when the project sponsor gets the information into the EST, and that's what we're concentrating on today. And then tomorrow we'll talk about the ETDM coordinator um, and the project team responsibilities as we start the screening event, go into the screening event, and close out the screening event. In this training, we're, we're kind of going through as if it's a programming screen because there's just some additional steps in the programming screen that we want to make sure that you're aware of how to do that in the new site. So that's what we're concentrating on in the next two days. So who does this involve? It's the project teams at the MPO and FDOT and consultants who actually put in the information into the environmental screening tool, get everything ready, get the notifications out, prepare summary reports, send those um, publish the summary reports when they're ready, and then at the end of the programming screen, there's some specific formal approvals that go up um, to the lead agency, usually OEM, when it's a NEPA project. And then, um, and this chart just shows what those different assignments are in the EST. We've got our data entry clear up through the ETDM coordinator, primary, and the um, project managers as well. The difference between the ETDM coordinator and ETDM coordinator primary is the primary is the, the person that's responsible for the ETDM process in their district. It's like Jonathan, Kathleen, um, Asia, Tori, to name a few. And the ETDM coordinators are their support staff that can do many of the tasks, but not the actual um, formal approval process. And then they have their data entry folks who can just enter the data while it's in a draft mode and send it to the rest of the team to review. And then the ETDM coordinator management team supports the coordinator with um, getting information ready, but not actually sending it out. 
So I hope that makes sense. I hope it clarifies this questions we get a lot about who can do what. Um, and before we get started with the webinars, I do just want to make sure that you have this um, this URL. And Mike, maybe you could go ahead and put that in the chat to the whole group so everybody does have it. We are going live next Monday, and we will send out a um, a what's new throughout through the EST, the old EST, at that time, so that you'll um, have the new URL to get started. Our ETAD are already using this, and we've been using it for our AOI only users as well for quite some time now. We started a couple years ago just doing it in a phased approach, getting it over, and our objective is to close down the old site in the middle of June when Internet Explorer is depreciated. So this new site works on the modern browsers like Chrome, Edge, and Firefox. It does not work on Internet Explorer. Their Internet Explorer is just not supporting some of the newer technologies. So that's one reason it's getting depreciated and going away. So our, our we will have it them both running for about a month, but then um, we will be closing down the old site. So we hope that you can get on it as soon as possible and start using it and let us know how you like it. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Stephanie and she's gonna grab the screen and we're going to um, do the first steps. First, just general navigation, getting around the, the site. And then the second um, thing is creating a project and getting the information into the EST. We're not actually gonna start um, a GIS analysis that takes some time, but um, we'll take a break at that point and then come back and start using a different project. We are on our test server, uh, just so you know, using um, fake data, fake projects, um, fake names even this time. Sometimes we actually pretend to be somebody, but this time we have a training account. So Stephanie's logging in right now. And this is our new site. You'll notice at the upper right, at the top, there's breadcrumbs that you can click on to navigate your way around the site. You know, as you go through the site, you can always get back. Of course, this, since it's using modern browser technology, you can use your back button, forward button to go back and forth as well. Um, as you move over um, towards the right on that front line, you'll notice some little icons. These are just quick links to different pages that um, you probably will frequently use, such as um, dashboard, re, um, reviewers, tasks, lists, notifications, and your profile. The little person face there is where you can change your password, um, update your contact information if you need to, and, um, and log out. You don't need to log out using that. You can click the little X and that'll log you out as well. And then going down to the next line, back over to the left, you'll see those three lines there at the top. That's what we call our hamburger menu. If you click that, it'll close the left menu, click it again, it opens it. If you're on a smaller screen, like um, you know a tablet or something, this site is relatively responsive and it'll start shrinking down and resizing and you'll find that left menu will actually be under those um, three lines under the hamburger menu there. And then moving on to the right, you'll see some blue icons and these are page specific and you'll notice some of them are grayed out, some of them are um, are a brighter blue and that just tells you which ones are activated and available for this particular page. So there's the ability to um, make a Adobe Acrobat, some pages have tables that you can create in Excel. Um, you can zip some pages. You can go to um, the map viewer at any time by clicking the globe. And then the little question mark has a pull down and you'll find some general information as well as page specific help. So whichever page you're on, it's, pay, it's context sensitive. So whichever page you're on, you'll find the help for that particular page. Then on a little bit further to the right, we have our search bar. This is very 
similar to our golden search on the old site that you can type in a name of an ETDM number, a, a word that might be in a name of a project and search for that. And it comes back with a variety of things, just like on the old site, doc, um, documents in our library, projects, contacts, whatever might fit. If you click the more um, right beside that, this is where our advanced search is. And you can search using um, different criteria for like ETDM projects to find a project or the next one down is um, ETAT um, comments from a review. But, um, but going to the ETDM projects like Stephanie just clicked on, um, you'll notice you can search by name, you can search by district, um, like and region. Regional means geographic or planning organization, like say you want something from a specific MPO or um, a turnpike, which might cover multiple districts. Um, you can pick that, you can pick the various statuses. And you know you're you're basically going through the this list and and picking creating a a filter and then at the end of the result when you hit submit it will bring up a table of your projects that you've selected. On the left menu. Um, You'll see several options there. The reviewer action items are for um, our ETAT and our CLCs who review um, and make comment during review. It is also a place where if you're the ETDM coordinator, you could actually find some um, like actions that you may have some approvals to do, like the class of action recommendations or um, things like that to go on. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail for this page today because we did that when we rolled this out with the ETAT tools and we do have detailed training available for that particular page. So the next things on the, um, the left menu and you can also find these to this um, project coordination. Notice you, you can get to this three different ways this stuff three different ways. So on the left menu, you pull down the arrow, you'll see that there's an option for a dashboard and for project actions. You'll also notice over on the right, when you're on the home page, there's quick links. So when you come to the home page, you can just automatically click if you want project actions or dashboard. And we'll show you what the difference is between those two. Up at the very top on the right, as I pointed out before, that dashboard is going to go to the same place. So we have three different ways, depending on what page you are, where you are, we wanted to make sure you could always get back to your project coordination dashboard. That's kind of like one of the um, points, the starting points for uh, these preparation and support tasks. Um, also down on the left menu, we have your area of interest. If you use that, that takes you to the dashboard. Again, we had a whole webinar on that when that um, when it was rolled out and then more recently as well. So I think you've already been trained on that and, and have those resources available. Um, and then same with the document review. There is a module for document review that we recently released. And those are all available on the left menu. And then under help, is where you will find, so if you click on the overview there, you'll find basically what I just went through, the general navigation, how to use the site, um, how to get through the site, where things are. It gives some, also, some more um, details about the pages when we get into that and how to use the various fields. Um, we'll be showing you in a little bit how to work with tables and you'll see how to work with the text boxes. But the, just the general information on using the site is what you'll kind of find on that overview. And then going back to the help, we have our multimedia EST handbook. We don't have it as a single PDF anymore. What it is is a variety of um, three, mostly three different styles of help. One is just, we call it a simple steps, which is like, here's like, 
you're on one page, you have to fill it out, one, two, three, four, whatever the steps are, basic steps are there. We also have these quick guides that kind of go through a whole process. Um, we're actually creating one for what we're doing today, preparing for the um, the screening event. And it's, it's a, a process that requires multiple pages and we try and put that in one guide together. And then we have our videos of, of the different tasks. You'll notice on the right, there's a filter by category. So depending on um, what you might be interested in, um, you can click on there. Oh, and, and Stephanie's also showing you, you can actually just search using the, uh, the column headers. You'll notice some of them are pulled down, some of them you can type in something and it'll filter it. Um, like if I, I knew I wanted something about the map, I could, under the file, I could search that. I can also just click the, on the right there, um, there's a black box um, under a header that sorts it, and it's a quick link. We are, um, we're put, we're putting um, catalog numbers on our items, which they aren't there on, stage but at the beginning of most of the files when it gets up to production it'll have a catalog number which you can kind of think of in terms of um, like a course catalog when you were in school and those show up as part of the file name um, very important note with the tables is when you're done with your search unless you want to keep it that way that cleared save search is important to know because the tables will remember what you've searched for and will and as long as you're logging in on the same computer it will come back to the same results and so if to get back to everything you just click that clear save search and it'll bring back all the items it's easy to forget i have done that it's like oh i'm on here and i and it's like, oh no, where did my stuff go? Oh yeah, I have to hit the clear safe search. So we want to point that out. Okay, so that I um, so next, what I want to show you is a project specific pages. So let's go to well, let's start with the dashboard first. Let's go to the um, project coordination dashboard, which provides some basic information um, for the. ETDM coordinator team. It any reminders, for example, if um, if a summary report needs to re, be republished or there's something waiting for your action, like one of your your if you're the ETDM coordinator primary and one of your team members has sent you a recommendation for a class of action, um, say you need you would need to go in and um, accept that recommendation in order for it to go on to the lead agency. So these are things that you might ha have gotten an email about, but you don't need to search through your email. It should be showing up right there under reminders. And then the ETAT review status is actually changing. It's going to be called review status because it's going to include both the ETAT members and um, lead agency review statuses of different actions so that you can see where your project is um, just in that review, while the, like for example, while an ETAT review is going on, it will tell you who has you. Um, it tells you the completion status, like of the agencies who are expected to comment. Um, have they commented? And then you can click on that and bring up a report that gives you the details, showing you how many um, people have actually. Um, comment and and like I said this is kind of test data but if they had if people had commented it would have it would have shown you um, who had commented and what the agencies the status is of the different agencies so you can kind of look that up but this um, table gives you a quick quick glance and then further on down under that table there's some um, additional resources like if you need to send an email to different groups of um, like your ETAT members or something, not as um, not project specific, but just you need to send out a notification about, you know, a webinar or something like that. You can use that tool. 
very it it functions very similarly to the tool you're currently using on the old site just a little bit um, cleaner look and feel to it but same as before you could you can you know pull up people by role and put your text in and send it out the next thing at the very bottom there is the project actions and if you click that this brings up your current projects that you're working on and some people um, may want to go straight to this that's why it's also a quick link and on the left menu as well so where's my project is the main table on this page and it has all the projects that are currently in draft or um, or, or in progress that you're, you've been working on. The most ones with the most recent actions, like somebody just edited some data, those will be up front, up at the top. So it's ordered by the last action. Um, and you can resort it and things by using the column, the columns above, but it's, um, it's just how it's by default organized. So for each project, you'll notice the ETDM number is highlighted and there's a pull down there. Um, three options is managing my project, which we'll go into more detail in a little bit. And that is, that's where you actually are entering the data, editing it and all that stuff. Um, show on map would bring it up in our map viewer. And then pause project is something that, this is a project you know you're not gonna be working on for some reason, it, it's not moving forward right now, you can pause it and it will go down to a table down below that says inactive projects. And that, it keeps it in the database, it keeps it there, it's just out of your way so you don't need to have it on your active projects list and it, if it does go there and it's it's time to activate it again you can go in there and set it as active again just the same as going to the um, ETDM number and then you'll also notice at the top table there's a bunch of actions you can do over on the right underneath the um, last column there the the text in bold is the status and those are the same statuses that we've been using for years so if, um, assuming you're familiar with moving the, the project through the process this that hasn't changed we still have to move it through the process and these are the different statuses and then underneath it depending on what status it is there's certain things you can do with it and so you'll notice like those first two, there's only two items under that first one. The ETAT review is complete. Well, there's only two things you can do as you go into manage the project where if there's information you need to update or you can start your um, programming, uh, start a new programming screen. Then, then uh, but the next one, the GIS analysis complete, there's several things that, well, you might need to do before you can move it forward. So there's several actions there. So again, it just kind of depends where it is um, and what you can do in moving the project around. But if you click on Manage Project on any of them, it'll take you to the project-specific page. And because you will have you have access to edit the data, it will um, have this Manage Project task list on the right and this you could think of as you can kind of think of it as a to-do list it's not you know there's a lot of things that don't have a required order of things that you but there's different things you need to do in order to move the project forward and to finish it and so you can it's organized by that kind of topic like the project information you can you would um, enter project information or prepare an AN package, agency coordination, community coordination. They're kind of all grouped in, in those topics. The page itself, we, we just called a project page because we try and put all the information about the project at one place so that you can get to it and you can get to the detailed reports about the project from this page. So if you scroll down, um, you'll notice 
the goal of the project screen and the project description, purpose and need, these all appear here once they've been filled out. Um, summary of public comments, very similar to the um, project description page that we had on the, the old EST, but it's got more information than that. Um, notice Stephanie closed the managed project task list and opened a table of contents and that gives you the outline of this page and you can hop to different pages of it. You'll notice like by that federal consistency determination for example for example there's a view with a little pop out icon that means there's a report associated so if you want to see the detailed report you can go to that and it, notice it opened it up in a, another tab and then going back to the previous tab um, and scrolling on down, you'll just notice things are in tables. Project documents are all there. If this project had a AN package, that would appear there as well. You'll find any anticipated permits and technical studies that have been assigned and resource data reports. These are your PED, your sociocultural data reports, and your GIS analysis reports. Notice the GIS analysis reports are organized in different, um, well actually, so there's a GIS analysis. Those GIS reports are the standard GIS analysis and you can um, pull those up and see those. The sociocultural data reports are all listed there as well. Um, easy. Oh, and the GIS reports are zip files and stuff like that as well. Um, we have both types of the SDRs, the clipped versions and the intersecting versions. We have them at the um, quarter mile and 500 foot, just like we do now. We just, they're just in a little different place. Um, cultural resources um, reports there as well. And then the hard copy maps, this is where you would find your hard copy maps. You just click down there and you can um, go to the, you can either open them individually or go to the page that lists them or download them as a zip file. And then scrolling on down, you'll see the details for the analysis areas. These are the same information as before, um, just in a different table format, but this the same sort of tables. We were very consistent with the type of tables. You should always be able to search for things, um, filter if there's more than one record on them. And then continuing on down below that, if this project had been through a screening event, you would find the um, reports like the ETAT comments. Um, if the summary report had been published, it would be found under here. And then under that, if there's any eliminated alternatives, that's where you would find those reports. So that's the basics um, of the, the general navigation of the site. Um, you'll be using the managed projects, the table of content, this, this page a lot, and your um, project actions. So, um, oh, and at the very bottom of the page, if you need to call us, that's where our phone number, that's where our email is. You can always reach us at the help desk as well. And I believe, is that it, Stephanie? Have I gotten, did we get through everything with the general overview? Uh, yes, we did. Okay, great. Are there any questions, um, Mike, for us to answer? Yes, we, we got to get one um, on the, uh, and I think uh, Amanda answered herself. On the SDRs, if you go back to that, um, there was a link to, uh, the green SDR, and then one called SDR reports. Green is the name of the, an analysis area in this case, and so those reports are for that particular analysis area. If you go to the full SDR reports page, I believe you can also get SDRs for the county um, as well as uh, other analysis areas on the same project. And Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So the project page, if there's multiple alternatives, it will list them um, for each alternative. And this little test won the alternate, well, analysis area, I keep calling it alternative. 
may not be an alternative. It may be like a study area section or something like that. Um, but in this case, there was just one, one feature being analyzed. Okay, so now that we've gone through the general overview, we're going to, oh, good point. Um, notice Stephanie click um, at the upper right. There was one icon I did not point out um, because we didn't have a project selected at the time. That filing little filing box, filing cabinet will take you to your project detail page. So if you've got a project selected and notice the dark green bar under where it says environmental screening tool, it tells you what your active project is. And if you want to quickly switch between projects, um, the little double arrow there brings up a quick search and you can just type in a different ETDM number and you know select it and it'll it would open up that project in that page or its page so that's just a quick thing and then the other little icon next to that will open up the project on the map and there are some things that I didn't point out that are up in the header as well so if you go up to the header and open up the project header um, well first you'll notice even when it's closed you can view on map and you can see the milestone report um, you can also, if the project has been um, like moving through the process, different milestones, different screening events, those dates will um, be down where it says uh, project milestone dates and you'll be able to see different milestones, different events for that project as the data was at that point of time. As an editor, you'll, you'll always see the current data. Um, which, you know, it might be the same as, you know, if it's recently been published or something, but it's um, it's assuming you want, you're, you're getting ready to edit something or you want to see what's in draft. But if you ever do want to see what it looked like at a certain point in the past, you would just go there and click on the dates. We had another question about the uh, will the AM package appear under the table of contents if one is required so you can view the draft? I think it will appear under manage project um, when you uh, are on a programming screen project or a, P, a project development um, project. I think and that'll, yeah, and I, and I think you'll notice as we go through, our next thing we're gonna do is create a project. Okay. And I think it, things like that will become apparent where you'll see what needs to be done with it. Thank you. Um, as you move through. So let's go ahead and start creating a new project. We'll start from the very beginning and you'll notice right there on the project actions, there's a button to create an ETDM project. So we click that button and it brings up this basic form to start filling in the information. Um, and I know a lot of you, how you like to do this is you get that information all prepared like in a Word document offline so you don't have to worry about the internet going out right in the middle of um, creating this so you'll we we kept the order um, that you're used to so that you can use your same templates and you can just go down um, one thing you'll notice throughout that we did try to do and this was based on the feedback of our testing team was instead of having like with the PED, it used to be multiple pages that you'd have to go from one thing to another. It's all on one page now so that you can just keep going down, do your work and, and fill, fill in the blanks as you go. And like I mentioned earlier, for today's demonstration, we're going to do a programming screen with the AN so that you can kind of see all those extra pieces that apply to the programming screen. And, you know, this should all, in, in terms of the fields and the information being requested, it's pretty much the same as before. It should be very familiar to you. Project manager, 
Yeah, same as before needs to be assigned as an EST in the EST before you can pick it. If they're not on there, just let us know. And and given the ETDM coordinator's authorization, we can add them to the system. In the federal review process, select whether it's state or federal. And we're gonna, just gonna go with the federal because that again has extra steps that we wanna show you. And the funding, and then here's where you indicate some federal um, permits. And then the goal of screening event is new. It's not new information. Many of you have been providing that information. Just what's the purpose of this particular review? Is it to um, compare alternatives? Is it to, you know, obviously it's to get the ETAT comments, but is there, what's the specific purpose? And that was often in the project description and the OEM administrators we're asking that that be taken out because it's not part of it's it's part of the description of like the PD&E study or the ETDM study, but it's not a, pro, a a description of the project itself. So they were asking it be taken out, but that's really useful information that will help focus the ETAT comments and they know what you're what what's the decision you're trying to make. And so just a sentence or two. Um, it doesn't have to be very long in most cases um, that that you just put that in there for goal of screening event. And then project description um, as it's described in the manual, um, purpose and need, same as always. Um, some of the cool features that we've added um, are, you know, ability to add images, tables, to the text boxes, those are still there. Those are recent additions that we were able to keep and, and work on. There's a little preview, that little um, magnifying glass there. It's so you can see what it would look like on a page. Is it gonna fit right? Is it gonna um, behave as you wanted to. And keep in mind, um, same as always, that this is just a web-based text editor. It, it's it's fairly robust, but if you want really nice looking formatted tables and things, the best thing to do is do it in Word or whatever software you use. Take a screen capture or export it as an image and then bring it in as an image. Um, planning consistency. Status, it's the same as it has been. Um, we just want to show you how these, the functionality is just a little bit different and the clicking the boxes. Here's how you upload. Let me just browse to your document, bring it up. Um, the tables here. You'll notice that comment box. Um, actually, you can make it bigger or smaller with those three little um, pointer things at the corner. That's kind of handy. And you can actually do with the text boxes, you can do that with the CL editors as well. It's got the same three lines that you can drag and pull the CL editors down. Oh, good. That hopefully will help you not have to be scrolling through little boxes. <laughs> nice improvement there. Summarize public comments. That's probably one thing that the um, that the CLC, the community liaison coordinators, would be either giving you or entering this in themselves. Um, 
And then here's where you would designate exempted agencies. Just indicate which ones and then provide a justification. And then when you're done with that, click save. And let's see how it shows you. Notice the green box up at the top. That's that's letting you know what's next, what else needs to be done. And you can um, click on that next action there, or you can do it from the manage project list as well. And so she's, she, Stephanie first entered the project information. Now she has to define the analysis area, one or more of them. And once she's done with that, she clicks save. And the next thing is, let's see, to Maybe. use the map, right? Yeah, you can either enter additional analysis areas or you can click on this icon and it will open up the map and it will zoom to the county that your project is in. And Stephanie's just going to do a really quick fake project um, to keep it simple because we have detailed training on how to enter your projects on the map viewer. This this hasn't changed. It's been out there for a couple years now, and I know some of you use it. Some of you send your files at this point, your shape files or your GIS files to GeoPlan, um, and and just like before, they're available and willing and able to do that too. So you can either enter your projects in using the map or you can send it to them. And at that point, um, once you finish entering it, you would run your GIS analysis. And with that, this would be a great time to see if you have any questions and um, and then we're going to go on a quick break. So are there any questions, Mike? Not seeing any further questions. Okay, let us, let's, let's just take a, a quick five minute break. Um, Stephanie is going to set up the next project. So we don't have to sit here waiting for the analysis to run. And um, we'll just go ahead and pick up the next steps from there. So be back at um, 10.50.
Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, we do have a question. I'm not sure we answered it, but I think you can see right now the answer um, about the AN package appearing under the table contents if one is required. On the project detail page, it will appear in the table of contents if it has been created and is available. It, it actually is under the um, project documents. It's not a separate item under the table of contents. But if it's required and you haven't done it yet, you'll notice um, item number two there under manage project. That is showing up because this is a programming screen with an AN package. So it no, you've already told it when you were setting up the project that it was needed and so it appears if it's like a planning screen or it's a screening event that without the AN package then that wouldn't be there. So it is um, it is paying attention to the setup of the project so that it knows what is needed. So hopefully that's that helps and we're going to continue on. We've created the project and now we're just going to finish updating the project information because um, some of the, especially like the feature information, you can't enter it until you have your features in there. So we wanted to make sure everything was done. So now we're going to, um, to continue entering information like the lead agency attaching documents and all that stuff. So this project has is that two analysis areas? Oh no, it's one analysis area, sorry. And Stephanie's just entering the information. Now that that feature has been created, she's um, going ahead and entering the information about each of the features. And in this case, there was only one, keeping it simple. Functional class. And you know that information, you just fill in what you know and what's available to continue. And then the next thing on the project is information is the PED, the preliminary environmental discussion. And like I mentioned before, this does work a little bit differently. Um, first you select your analysis area and you start entering the comments. And you go down through the different issues. Um, she's already entered the information on some of the items, so you don't have to. You don't, we don't have to sit here watching all the typing and stuff. <laughs> um, but you'll notice as she moves down that it's all in one long line now. You'll have your link to your GIS report in case you need it to reference it again. Um, but it was built in mind with in mind that most people have already done the evaluation and and have the information already just and it's just a data entry into the EST and updating it. So they're they're still or, they're organized in the same order um, as listed in the ETM manual and the PDE manual, so that it's the st same organization that you're used to. It's just all in one page instead of going having to click next 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 after each one yes um, one thing I did want to point out is in the right hand table of contents there will be a red asterisk next to the topics that have not been completed yet so it will be easy for you to tell uh, whether or not you missed one. Oh yeah thanks pointing that out And then when you're done, you just hit save and it goes to the next thing. And you'll notice the green said the comments were saved and you're done with your um, project, um, your PED. And the next thing is the 
any permits, and technical studies. So here you just click the add and you say what agency it's for, what, and then based on what agency it knows what types are associated with that agency. And then you can add your comments. You can delete, um, delete them as well there or edit it if, um, if you need to later. Same with the anticipated technical studies, they work pretty much the same. And if, if you run into like a technical study that for some reason maybe got added to the pd &E manual and we didn't catch it and get it put into our list, just let us know at the help desk and we'll add it to the list. Attaching documents works pretty similarly to before um, when you upload it, you can give it very, let, let it know various information. The ones that are required are the name, the description, and the category, and the publication date. The other things are things, if you know, it's helpful when people are searching in our EDMS, because these documents will go to our, our electronic document management system in DOT, and um, depending on what people search for, that information um, might be helpful. Get the file, which is also required, and upload it there. And again, the same as the technical studies, you can delete, edit it. If if you have a really long list, you need to search. You know, you can use the column headers there. But I guess that's handy, being able to delete them yourself. <laughs> don't have to call Lex. Okay, lead agencies. The same potential lead agencies are there. You just check which one would be a lead agency and save that. And you get your confirmation and now you're ready to start your AN package. So click on that and you'll, the the um, list on the side there, very similar to the way it functioned on the old site. It lists it, all the different parts that are needed and um, you can go through and get things uploaded. already done your PED. We had a quick question on the PED about um, what's required and um, you either have to have a project level PED or an analysis area level PED for each analysis area for every topic. So you don't have to do both, but you do have to do one or the other for each topic. And if there's um, <clears throat> only one analysis area, it, you'll, you know, like in this case, you only, um, you, you may have noticed Stephanie only had the option of doing the analysis area because it's the same thing. Uploading the application. Um, just to note, um, we've noticed this year that the, um, application for federal assistance changed. It's an interactive form now and it has been causing problems with the PDF um, program that we use. And to get around that, just print it, you know, once it's all filled out, print it to PDF or um, scan it um, to get the signatures, whichever way 
works as long as you print it to PDF and then upload it um, it'll work it just doesn't work if it's still that interactive um, format like that one would probably while I'm out but we still have the, the previewer so you can see what you've uploaded and then the transmittal list it adds in the required ones automatically and then you can add your project specific contacts as well we are still working on the Native American tribe um, notifications so at least for another month or so you'll, you'll still need to continue sending those out separately for the ones that aren't on the ETAT so Seminoles of Florida are on the ETAT so you don't have to worry about them but the other ones they're listed on here but they are not going out through the EST they're, they're going out offline they can go email by email we don't have to do hard copies anymore but it's an external thing until we get the notifications customized for them that's our next to do list so we we're hoping to get that ready for you pretty quickly too This is Sorry, just how I didn't realize I, I turned off my, my camera during the break and I forgot to turn it back on. Um, this little message is just letting you know that, hey, you're entering a new contact that's very similar to one that's already in the database. Would you like to continue adding your new one or select the one that we already have? And one nice thing, um, oh, these are contacts, sorry. When, when we, you're uploading documents that need to go as attachments, like say you're referencing a table or something that's in, a, in the project documents, on the old system, you had to call it a hard copy map. That's the only way it would recognize it was part of the AN package. But now you can actually, any of your document attachments, you can select and, and include it as an attachment in the um, in the AN package and then it pulls it all together for you And it'll say draft on it until it's um, sent out. Okay. And then you send, save it as final. You get your confirmation. Okay. And then the next thing is sending for OEM, right? Uh, yes, I will. I'm going to update to ETM QAQC. So I'm just going to, I can click on this actions drop down list and do that. So that's how you change your status.
and you'll get your confirmation. Let's see. And now that it's in ETDM QA QC, I can submit it to OEM for review. Oh, wait, there it goes. And your status will update to reflect that. And since it's an OEM review, it's, you know, it you have to wait for them to respond either to return it or approve for screening. That's why there's not any actions for you at this time to do. So we have gotten through the whole, everything for um, getting it ready for screening. And our plan is tomorrow we will pick up with creating the notifications and sending it out and showing you how to monitor the ETAT um, comments as they're coming in. So if there's any issues that or concerns, you can start coordinating with them. Um, if somebody needs an extension, how to do that. Are there any questions? No additional questions yet. People may be typing. Okay, well with that then, if there are no more questions, we will just close for today and start up tomorrow. Same time, different link probably. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Have a good day.